Okay, guys, we're back. Um, hopefully, you saw the last video, and now you you know how how we can like know know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So so I'm gonna start out by well, let's see what this this problem wants us to do. We want to find n, and n n is this term right here. And we know what do we know? We know that the constant term in this expression right here divided by the constant term in this expression is 5 over 3. Okay, so we're, we're going to obviously need to find what the constant term is. Well, what's, what does constant mean? It means there's no variable, no variable attached. And that happens when all the x's cancel out. And this is possible because this is a positive exponent, this is a negative exponent. And, and at a certain interval, they're going to be able to equal to 0. So, so let's try to find that interval when, when, when it's equal to 0. Um, actually, let's just let's let's pick out the general term. Let's pick out what the general expression for each individual term is for that. So uh, it's n choose r when r n this time is fifteen. So fifteen choose some r. We don't r is the position, I guess, in, in the expansion. Uh, it's also the number of y's you choose. Um, times our first function which in this case is x to the third I said last video that you know I said last video that it's it's this x x is x could be a function it doesn't have to be that but anyways x to the third times 15 minus r times x to the minus 2 and this is the same as 1 over x squared, if you know your exponent laws, to the r, r value. And this is just the general, this is one, one kind of term. It's a term in the polynomial expansion. Okay, so this is a general term. So what, what is, when, when this all cancels out, when, when the, this is all multiplied together and it's x to the 0, this is going to be constant. So so this is going to be the value and this is going to equal 1 right here so our what we're looking for is 15 choose r um, and we're going to get that when these exponents multiply together to be 0 so how do we know when this is 0 well the r is the only thing that's variable here and knowing exponent laws we could set like if we multiply all this together all these exponents together and then set it equal to 0 we could solve for r that way and here, just I'm going to uh, do the exponent laws right here. This is this is kind of separate right here. So I'm gonna mark it off. Three times fifteen minus r uh, times, or this is plus minus two r. So minus two r. And we're gonna set this equal to zero. So when this is zero, we can solve for the r value that gives us this. So uh, this will give us minus three r plus fifteen minus two r. Oops, r r times two. Um, associative property or something you can do that. All right, so that's a commutative property. Sorry. Okay, so so this turns into minus 5r is equal to this is supposed to be a 45 right here it's equal to minus 45 so r is then equal to 9 okay so what does that tell us that this gives us what this is because we were trying to look for r okay so we kind of got, got our first step in the plan we know hey we know at least something about it and Okay, so the, the function that we're trying to get, this is uh, 15, choose 9, we know now, divided by some unknown constant term. We don't know what this n is, so divided by n, choose some, some weird r value that makes this 0. This is going to equal 5 over third. 5 over 3, 5 thirds. Um, we, we don't really know what that is just yet, but hey, maybe maybe we could do the same thing. Maybe we could do the same thing to this, get an idea of what 
of what n has to be in relation to r. Maybe there's a ratio that we could find out. So let's just let's just look for it anyways. So I'm gonna just draw a little line around here to kind of separate separate our progress, and then we're going to do the same thing we did over here. And set this time with another unknown with an unknown because we don't know what n is this time. So what was what were our expressions? We got x x to the fourth and x to the minus third. So x to the fourth to the n minus r. times x to the negative third negative third to the r so it's the same thing we did up there we're just kind of gonna set it equal to zero now so when this is zero all that's gonna remain is is this term right here and this is actually going to be what the the constant term is so that's why I put that right there this is going to be the constant term when all this is x to the zero and it turns into one when you multiply anything by one you get that so that's going to be the constant term uh... so what do we got we got four to the n minus r uh... let's try something then like four n minus four r i did this by multiplying because when you raise an exponent to another exponent you just multiply then when you multiply exponents you you add so in this case that's minus 3r and this is equal to 0 minus 7r is equal to minus 4n and r is equal to 4n over 7 okay so now we have now we have a relationship between n and r, um, but but what does this tell us? What can we extrapolate from this? How how does this help us? Well, let let's go back to the original original thing. It says right here if n is a positive integer. Okay, so we know n is a positive integer, and that makes sense because you know the binomial theorem only works with it, with integer values of n and r. I mean, like, how how many possible combinations are there if you have 20 cards and you can choose three and a half of them? That, that doesn't make any sense. Probability falls apart with fractions. So, so that means r also has to be an integer. And the only way we can r can be an integer because you're dividing by seven right here. The only way r can be an integer is if n n is divisible by seven, so it cancels out with this seven term. So, so possible values of n, we're going to say n can equal 7. Uh, it can equal 0, otherwise this would be 0 to, well, 0 to 0 is actually possible. But, because, you know, if you have nothing, then, well, there's only one way you can have nothing. But, but it, we said right here it's a positive integer, and 0 isn't positive. You got 14. It can be 21, it can be 28, maybe. We don't, we don't really know. But hey, we've narrowed it down a lot. We narrowed it down. We said x could, n could be just about anything. But hey, now we know, now we know different. So let's let's draw another line. I'm gonna switch color up to blue again. Okay. So so now let's. Um, I mean, let's let's just kind of plug and chug. So. What what what's our ratio? We're gonna bring this down here. We got 15. 15. Choose nine. Over. Well, what what's what's our n gonna be right here? What's what's what 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 should we try first? Let's try seven first. All right. Let's let's try seven first. If n is equal to seven, well, if n is equal to seven, what's r equal to? If n equals seven, then this n will cancel out with this seven, leaving only four. So we'll have seven, and our r is going to be four. And we're going to see is this equal to five over three? And then we're just going to be letting n equal seven. 
So what, what did we say this expression was equal to in terms of factorial? n over n minus r factorial times r factorial. So let's go back and, and do that with each. You got, you got 15 factorial divided by 15 minus 9 factorial is 6 factorial by r factorial, which is 9. And th that shouldn't be a fraction right there. This, this, this mark shouldn't be there. But our r is 9. And then we're dividing, we're dividing by this term, which is 7 factorial. It's the same thing we did. And 7 minus 4 is 3, so 3 factorial times r factorial, which is 4, 4 factorial. All right, does, does this equal 5 over 3, do we think? 5 over 3, do, does it equal that? Well, well, is there anything here that oops? Does, is there anything here that looks like we'll we'll cancel out, cross out, and go away? Well, I don't know. Let's let's try this. I guess we'll go that and um, here we got six times five now here in the bottom. Three factorial is equal to six, so so there's that. Um, Let's see. If, uh, we could maybe get rid of some of these 15. So you got 15 by 14 by 13 by 12 by 11 10. Okay, so this is this is what we got up here, and we got well 7 factorial times 5. It doesn't it doesn't seem like we're going to have enough enough terms this is going to be way higher than this so we're going it's going to be like a hundred over three instead of I don't know what it actually is but this is going to, you can you can see right here that this is going to be much higher so this obviously it, it does it does not does not equal it does not equal uh, seven and cannot equal seven so so let's try the next value let's uh, write what we wrote first down for the f which is 15 factorial because this this isn't changing this is this is the first term which we already found up here I mean this is this is this is basically what this is right here this is this is that this is that, that that's that so that stays the same and then we're gonna try 14 this time 14 looks promising because it's so close to 15 it might cancel out with a lot of stuff and if 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 we're 14, then what's r? If n is 14, then then n then the 14 divided by 7 is 2, and 2 times 4 is 8, so r is equal to 8. So 14 minus 8 is 6 factorial. Well, four, no, I mean 14 minus 8 factorial is 6 factorial, uh, and then we get 8 factorial right here. Okay, well. Already, it looks like a lot of stuff is going to cancel out. Like the sixes can go, and 15 factorial is just you know 15 times 14 factorial. So you can do cross out this and then get rid of that factorial sign, or we'll just cross that out and put the 15 right here. And, and the same with 8 factorial and 9 factorial, that crosses out to 9, and this 15 over 9 equal 5 over 3 if we you know, let, let's do the same kind of format we did if, if we let n equal 14 well, well 15 over 9 if you, if you divide out 3 by each 15 divided by 3 is 5 9 divided by 3 is 3 so yeah this does equal 5 over 3 it checks out. Yay. Okay, so so what do you know from that? We know that n is equal to fourteen. And this is our final answer. Let's let's box it. Let's box it. And then I don't know, we can box it again. And then we'll Kind of draw some lines around it. 
Yay, we got the answer. Woohoo! And at, that's it. That's it. N is equal to 14. This N, that's what we were trying to solve for. So when N is 14, this this all foils out and this all this all foils out and the constant term of this expression divided by the constant term of this expression is 5 over 3 if n is equal to 14 so the value of n therefore is 14 and that's amazing it's amazing how we can use math to come up with such a crazy solution like before this sort of math was invented there's no way there's no way that like besides just kind of going at it and actually putting out every single term of, of this expression before we had this binomial theorem we wouldn't be able to work with this this would just be this would take like a month to finish but because because we we, we managed to find the pattern we fi managed to find the pattern behind multiplying out something by a binomial uh, binomial uh, multi uh, exponentiating that it's uh we we found the answer, which which is really, I find that to be incredible, and well, I I hope you do too. You probably do if you stick with us this long. So, so thanks for that, um, and that, that's all for now. Bye.